taking on HP. So then obviously again, you know, the last point is 4, 4 horizontal and 4 vertical, you are getting 4, 1. Now, you may have a confusion, which one should be dark and which one should be dotted. Uh, you know, it's very, very easy, just follow this thumb rule and uh, you know, you will get everything. Say, you go to the front view, identify the extreme corners, here it is extreme, assume one horizontal line. Go to the next extreme, assume another horizontal line. You know, when you view from the top, uh, you will put an uh, arrow like this. So, whatever is above this line, whatever is above this line is obviously visible. This is your visible zone. Remember, the other uh, things, uh, you know, you are doubtful, you can't see. So, any point, let's say now 3MC is connected, so obviously it is invisible. Whereas AB is visible because it is above this line. BC is visible, it is above this line. In fact, ABCD is fully visible because it is above these two lines. So, connect ABCD by dark line. Before that, do one thing. Remember, edges are always visible. So, try to capture the outermost edges first. Give priority to the outermost edges. It's very simple to connect the outermost edges. Later on, you can bother about the inner data, inner shapes. Now, this is the skeleton, outermost shape. First, finish the outermost shape. Look at this object. Apply this rule. This extreme corner, you have a horizontal line. This extreme corner, you have a horizontal line. Whatever is within this limit is visible. So, put A, B, C, D as dark. A, B, C, D as dark. 1, 2, 3, 4 is fully below the visible zone. So, therefore, is totally invisible. But don't argue that 1, 2 is uh, visible because it is the edge. Beyond doubt, the uh, edge is visible. So, obviously, the remaining points should be made dotted. Now, look at the order A1. A, B, C, D is joined. 1, 2, 3, 4 is joined. A1. Go here. A1 is visible. So, make it dark. B2. B2. You see, C is linked. C3. C3 is inside. So, it's not visible. So, make it dotted. D4. No doubt. It is edge. You leave it. So, this is the final outline. But still, you see the problem is not solved. The problem is partly solved. So, therefore, we have to go to the next step. So, when you do the two inclination sum, the single inclination sums will be very, very easy for you. Remember, it's a good exercise. Try it out. So, here the 1C, 1 suffix 1, C suffix 1 dash. So, you know, both uh, this uh, leading diagonal is parallel here, here also it is parallel. So, how to make it perpendicular here? Just to put it upside down. Put uh, C1 down and 1 up, obviously, this line will become a point. Here, in this case, the leading diagonal is parallel to both HP and DP. Now, bring it parallel to HP alone. So, obviously, we will get it perpendicular to VP. So, make uh, these lines. Just project these lines. So, you have the projection lines like this. Now, take uh, these horizontal lines. We have got three horizontal lines. So, understand, take the measurement, this gap. Try to put uh, the mass vertical. Put uh, horizontals as verticals. You have four vertical lines. Second line, third line, fourth line. Try to put the mass horizontal. First line. Then second line. Then you have third line. Then you have fourth line. Okay. So now try to reproduce this. The one should go here. One suffix one should go here. And uh, C suffix one should go to the bottom. Obviously the three suffix one should come here. Then in between you have the A suffix one. A suffix one. So it is replaced. Therefore just put the mass suffix 2. Again, when you just tilt it, this side will go to the right side. So, 2 and B will go to the right side. 
you have 2 suffix 2 and uh, b suffix 2. So obviously when this point is 1 and this point is 2, this point is 3, you can have 4 here. This is a, b, c, then obviously this will be b. Now your diagram is ready in a different position. Make uh, this diagram. As such, you have drawn it in the previous position. You are just copying it in a different position. You are not changing the visible and invisible edges. So make uh, A, B, C, D visible fully. Make A, B, C, D visible fully. One A also visible. Then you have, uh, you know, this uh, 2, 3 invisible and 3, 4 invisible. Try to identify these invisible lines 2, 3 and 3, 4 then C3 as well. You know, when you view from this end, you want to, you know, you have to see the other side, which one is dark and which one is visible. According to me, again the rule applies. Go to the extreme corner here. Identify the extreme corner. Whatever is available within this limit is invisible. Whatever is available within this limit is always visible. So what is below this, you know, only three lines. Try to note down these three lines in a separate place. First, one and four will not be visible. One and two will not be visible. Then one and a will also be invisible. Try to pocket this. Only these three lines are invisible. Other, all the other lines are visible. It's just going to be visible. So your job is very, very simple now. Try to project this. Try to project this in the other way around, you will get one horizontal, go to one vertical, so you will be getting here, it is one, two dash, two horizontal, two horizontal, you go to two vertical, you will be getting two, two dash, obviously I will jump and I will find out three, two dash and I will find out four, two dash, it is very simple, so three horizontal and three vertical and four horizontal, four vertical. How do I locate this? Because of the symmetry, I understand 1, 2, 3, 4 should be like this. So you go to A, A horizontal and A vertical is available here, it is A to dash. B horizontal and B vertical is available here, so therefore this is B to dash. Obviously, you will have C to dash here and B to dash here. Now the problem comes whether C to dash is visible or 1 to dash is visible, you go from here. First C2 comes, then only 1 comes. So put uh, 1 to dash within bracket. Here also the same rule applies. Put uh, the outer edge always dark. Put the outer edge dark. Put the outer edge dark first. Then look at uh, these two lines. Make them darker first. So it is 1, 2, 2 is dotted. 1 to 4 is again dotted, then 1 to A is again dotted. So try to capture the remaining, it is A to B, B to C, C to D, then A to 1, everything is fine. So now you are getting a wonderful cube, you see the reduction, this is about a 30 degree line. Here again, you are getting a 30 degree line. The way I started with this problem is that this itself is the definition of isometric projection. We started with the projection of solids, but the answer is isometric projection. A cube is sitting on the ground with one of its corner and its leading diagonal perpendicular to BP and parallel to HP makes uh, it the front view itself is a cube of a reduced shape by just 30 degree line you will be able to guess uh, the kind of reduction is going on. So this is the projection of a solid that is Q 40 mm baseline with leading diagonal perpendicular to VP and parallel to HP with uh, one corner on HP. Try to capture, try to correct this answer. That's a important aspect. First take this with one corner on HP. Go to the last answer. Go to the last answer. Find out one corner is on HP means one point should be on x y line. Good. You are getting 3 to dash on x y line. You see this leading diagonal. You have identified leading diagonal as 1C. 
Well, it's it. It is reduced to shape. Now it's a true length. Now here in this case it is parallel and parallel. Both are true. But here in this case it is a point uh, in front view and a line in top view. What does it mean? The leading diagonal is now perpendicular to VP and parallel to HP. That's all. Your answer is absolutely correct. You can stop now.